Continuing on from the build video I did a few days ago, which was the last in the series of 21 ton mineral wagon builds, I had enough parts left over from the series to build an, a bonus wagon. So this one isn't going to be building, it's going to be weathering. The build on this one will jump in and out of sync because I was doing it in conjunction with another project. But to start off with, I gave all of it a base coat of black and that was to cover all the joins and lines. And if anything in the preceding processes got missed, it would just end up being a fake shadow. A dark rusty brown coat was then applied as another base coat. I had to do it again though, because I decided that I wanted this one to have some replated repairs. We've discussed in other videos how coal is such a corrosive material, especially to metal. The score line represents the difference between the original plate and the replating. It's normally the lower three quarters panel that is replaced. When pictures of replated wagons are studied, it, the replating always turns out to be unpainted and quite orangey in appearance. Brown with a touch of yellow paint was then mixed with some uh, rusty weathering powders to give the finish a bit of a rusty texture. I think the, the armour modellers that I watch call this wet blending. Now I've stated in videos before that I don't consider myself to be that good at this sort of thing. I watch and learn other people, especially on YouTube, that are far better than me. And this is me having a go, or as I like to call it, making it up as I go along. I will leave a link in the corner to some of the modelers that I watch doing this sort of thing. I then employed the sponge technique to break up the bland brownness of the, the slab sides of the wagon. With the same mixture thinned down, I then used it as a bit of a wash in the corners, highlighting some of the details. I then went in with a darker mix and picked out some of the panels on the doors and strengthening ribs. I'm using enamel paints at this stage and I'm not really concerned about the colours so long as they are a brownish and a blackish and then mixed together. Like I said, making it up as I go along. It's sometimes difficult to envisage how this is going to turn out. Because this is still essentially an undercoat, we're going to have to put a freight grey wagon colour on over the top of this and then strip it back to reveal what we're doing now. Picking out even more panels and then going back in with this same mixture but thinned down an incredible amount and then just blending and blending and blending. Getting to a position where it doesn't look that bad or seemingly anyway. Once I was happy with the appearance and the effects that we've created thus far I then left it overnight for the paint to harden off and dry completely. After masking up the underframe and the panels that we wanted to leave as replated, it was then time to give it two coats of cheap hairspray, leaving it to dry for five minutes between coats. I might have mentioned in the first video that I'm not that worried about the shade of grey that we're going to be using. After 10, 15, 20 years of trundling to and from collieries to pits and power stations and coal terminals in the open weather it would be really difficult to distinguish the proper shade of grey anyway. Three light coats of MIG grey acrylic and that was probably too much for what I wanted to achieve was applied through the airbrush to the body and then left for about 15 to 20 minutes to dry a little bit. After I put the grey paint down, I then masked up again for the white line that indicates the end door. It's a bit fiddly, but well worth it because you can do more with a painted line than what you can a transfer. Again, this was done with MIG acrylic paint. This was one of those occasions where it didn't matter if you got a pull or a, a snag on the paint when you was removing the masking, but annoyingly I didn't get one. With the camera a bit closer and with the paint dried off, 
you can probably see a little bit of texture in that replated panel. There's probably about a million videos on YouTube describing the hairspray technique and the processes involved and the reasons why it works. So I'll just do a quick summary of what I understand happens. The, you apply water to the, the paint, which then soaks through to reactivate the hairspray, which then dislodges and chips the paint. And this is filmed in real time. So you can see how quickly this process happens. At this stage, it's all about how much paint you want to take off and the desired effect that you're looking for. I was going for a look where there was virtually no original grey paint on the wagon at all, which is why I said a minute or two ago that I probably put too much on. It doesn't take that long for the paint to wear off and reveal the rusty, gloopy mess that we applied as an undercoat earlier in the video. Moving on to the panel with the white line which is painted on as well, you can see the effects taking hold and the reasons why I don't like putting a transfer on. Getting this, getting this sort of effect with, from a transfer I think would probably be virtually impossible. That's not to say that there's some out there that probably could. We'll keep going like this until we remove as much paint as we think is necessary and then leave it to dry for a few hours before we start the next process, which is using an enamel wash. The key to this one is shaking the bottle and getting it all mixed up because otherwise all the, all the um, pigment settles in the bo bottom of the jar in a huge gloopy sludgy mess. This is me making it up as I go along again. I like to, I like to drop the wash into the corners and then let it dry for a few minutes. Then go in with a brush dipped in thinners and dried off a little bit and then just blending the harsh edges that have been created where it's dried. The wash dries with a bit of a tide mark so if you go in with a, a damp brush and just blend that out you get a far better effect. It's quite easy with the washes and blending it to get the sort of streaking effect so if you just pull the brush straight down the side of the wagon. It's like the dust is running down the side in the rain. In some of the smaller panels, the wash is perhaps a little bit easier to apply because it just naturally gloops in the corners where dust and rust and mud and that sort of thing naturally accumulates. Then I use the same process with a damp brush just to blend it out just a little bit. Then I'm going to leave it overnight so all this paint dries completely before we start on what is fast becoming my favourite process, weathering powders. Again, I'll reiterate that I'm still no expert on this sort of stuff. I'm still learning how these are applied and how they interact with processes that we've already done. We'll start off with some track rust and we'll apply it to the underframe first. The underframe is the easiest one to deal with, I think, before we start on the upper body sides. So I've just, I've got a medium brush and I've got a liberal coating on the brush and then I'm making sure that the powder goes into the corners. That's with a darker shade. With the light rust, I then went over the middle of the panels and give those a bit of a going over and the result is, makes it look a load better. I think the difficult thing to note is when to stop because I'm sure that at some stage it's just overkill and you just lose all the the effects that we've done before and saying that I'm also conscious that this video has dragged on quite long enough and is very close to the YouTube prime 10 minute mark. Once I was happy with the amount of powders and the way it looked I then misted on some pigment fixer through the airbrush as low a pressure as I could possibly get it about 10 psi. This one will now go on to join its relatives the other 21 ton mineral wagons that we've built throughout this series. The next video of which will be a complete rundown of all of the wagons that we've built in the series. In the meantime thanks for watching see you next time.